In this video, we're going to have a brief introduction to interval notation. In interval notation, we have two distinct types that we're going to talk about. The first type is when we have discrete solutions or when there's a finite number of solutions. We see this generally when we're solving linear equations and we end up with, let's say, x equals 12. So if we have x equals 12, but we want to write our solution in interval notation, this is just a discrete single number. So we'll open up what are called braces. Braces generally look like this, although the good news is if you're not very good with those, if you just do squiggles, it basically looks like braces. And then you take those uh, solutions and you put them inside the braces. So I, would, I have my braces open, I'm going to put 12 inside, and that indicates that the solution set contains the element 12. We can also do this if there's more than one solution. So let's say we're solving and we end up getting a equals negative 6 or a equals 14. If we have more than one solution in interval notation, but still a finite number, we write them in the braces and we put them in order from least to greatest. So I would open up the braces and I would put negative 6, then I put 14 because negative 6 is smaller than negative 14. So when there's a finite number of solutions, we put them in order from least to greatest inside a set of braces. It might also, uh, we might end up with something that has no solution. So we saw that with linear equations, you end up with something like 0 equals 5, and there's no variables, and it doesn't make any sense, and there's no solution. To represent no solution, we use uh, the empty braces. So we would open up braces, and then we would put nothing inside, and we close the braces again. Putting anything inside the braces indicates that there is a solution. So if there's no solution, we do not put anything inside the braces. And that would be representing our discrete solutions or our finite number of solutions. The other option is we could have a continuous solution set or infinite number of solutions. And before we talk about what these will look like, there is some notation that we have to talk about, uh, discuss. So first, sometimes when we're looking at the continuous solutions, the solutions get bigger and bigger and bigger, and there is no biggest solution. If that's the case where it keeps going and we want to say that the numbers, the solutions are approaching infinity, we might have to use the infinity sign. So we use the infinity sign to represent numbers approaching infinity. <clears throat> or if the solution set is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, we use negative infinity. And negative infinity just indicates numbers are getting smaller without bound or numbers are approaching negative infinity. The infinity sign basically looks like an 8 that got turned 90 degrees. I'm not very good at drawing them, this is the best that I can do, but basically it is just like a sideways 8. Uh, also when we're talking about continuous solution sets, so we're talking about an interval of numbers. Um, these intervals of numbers, we use either parentheses or brackets or a combination of parentheses and brackets. If we use parentheses, which are like what we see before, we have two numbers and then we separate them with parentheses, the parentheses indicate that the endpoint is not part of the solution set. So parentheses indicate uh, endpoint is not part of the solution set. Not part of the solution set. And alternatively, we could use brackets. Brackets are kind of like parentheses, but with a rigid sides, and we would have bracket, and we would separate the numbers with a comma, and the brackets indicate that the endpoint is, or the endpoints are, part of the solution set. Indicate end points is part of the solution set. We frequently will use uh, this notation when we're talking about linear inequalities. And I, I briefly mentioned this, but you can intermix parentheses and brackets. So if one endpoint is included and one is not, then you would use a bracket and a parenthesis. Um, so for example, if we have x is greater than 12, to represent all of the numbers that are bigger than 12, there are an infinite number of numbers bigger than 12. 12.01, 12.02, 13. 77, a million, and we can't write them all in braces because there are infinitely many solutions. So the way we would represent this in interval notation, 
as mentioned before, we do go from least to greatest. So here, numbers that are bigger than 12, we would start at 12, but 12 is not bigger than itself, so we would use a parenthesis. And then to say that it's gonna just, that it gets bigger without bound, the interval would not have a, a biggest number, we would say that it's gonna go to infinity. It goes from least to greatest. On the flip side, if we had x is less than or equal to 12, let's say, so now we're talking about numbers that are 12 or less. 11, 0, negative 37, et cetera, et cetera. So because there's no smallest number, we would start this interval at negative infinity. Anytime you use infinity or negative infinity, it must be a parenthesis because those are not real numbers. Those are just something that real numbers, a, a way to indicate that the real numbers keep going in one general direction. So we would say negative infinity, and then the biggest number in the solution set is 12, and we include it, so we would put a bracket here.